Good afternoon fellow mod wizards, Sager 262 and welcome back to the channel. Today I will be doing the second video on the Lord of Plagues. So following up from yesterday's video, if you didn't see it, go check it out. About how I paint with washes and why I think washing is so important for certain miniatures. And the reason I'm using Lord of Plagues is because it's one of the rare miniatures where painting using washes and oils is a really great way to just get a good base coat. However, today I will be highlighting some of the flesh tones that you on some of the ridges here these little dots just outlining stuff here outlining the folds and the neck and everything to give it a more full skin color warmer color if i can just get it to focus so right now he does look a little gray which is what we wanted some decaying flesh but now we want to liven up some parts of the flesh anyway with a warmer tone and to achieve that i will be using vallejo's light flesh color mixed with off-white. I think I'm going to start with a 50-50 mixture of each and go from there. What I'm trying to achieve now that I'm actually back in my primary studio is a look similar to that of these pox walkers. For example, this pox walker here was painted in the exact method that I'll be using now white then wash then flesh tones picked out and then I'll wash again whereas ones like this or even this one in the back right here were just white and so I did a little bit of different techniques and all the pox walkers and I'm really happy with the way that they came out and so even though those are not Age of Sigmar miniatures I will be employing the same painting methods here because they are Nurgle miniatures well they're not Nurgle miniatures they're servants of the Death Guard, who are in turn servants of Nurgle, blah, 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 semantics, not important for this project. Let me mix my color here. And like I said yesterday, the light pink color, the light flesh and the white are very, 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 very thin. The Vallejo mech line is incredibly thin, so they're almost like glazes. I'll show you what I mean by that is you can't really get a good look for it but this paint oh, let me get that out of the way is super thin super thin so i don't actually thin the vallejo mech line the idea is that they can be airbrush on no thinner some people like them for hand painting if you're used to painting with inks or glazes i'm not but i've slowly been getting used to it since i've been painting warhammer miniatures okay so this is going to be for people who usually paint Warhammer stuff, like an edge highlight. We're going to try to blend it a little bit better than this. You see it adds some nice color. Oh, let me remove some of that. Add some nice color to the skin there. Oh, it's out of focus again. There we go. Sorry, I'm not actually, like I said yesterday, I'm still getting used to painting with a camera in front of me, and so I don't know when I accidentally knock it out of focus. But yeah, we are just going to be going along basically every raised area. Now for the areas around these sores that you see right here, I'm going to sort of touch up on them with this color. I'm actually going to go back in a later step and hit that with some red paint and uh, some purple oils, a color I make on my own to kind of get the sense of decayed or bruised flesh. However, it doesn't hurt to have them highlighted out now. So essentially what this is doing, as you can see, is it's not only adding a splash of color, but it's starting to provide an interesting contrast between the darker, grayer parts of the flesh and this, and that's what we want. Now, like I said, I'm a huge weather painter. I do everything on weathering, so all this stuff is going to get blended. 
and a lot of people will wet blend at this point which is a valid technique to use it's actually one of the best to use if you're painting miniatures and warhammer you want to wet blend as much as possible but as you can see all the paint on the miniatures already dry from yesterday so i won't be doing that technique and two i actually have never wet blended in a way that i was satisfied with it that doesn't mean that it's not a great technique i mean i gotta practice with it more but for now, for the purpose of this kind of video tutorial or just video in general, I'll just be employing techniques that I actually use. And the results I get, while they're not as crisp of a transition as wet blending, I think they're fine in my opinion. That's why I still use these techniques. But if you're somebody who does wet blend, I'd like to hear all about it in the comment section below. Tell me a little bit more about just what you do with your miniatures. If you do a hybrid of what I'm doing and wet blending, if it's just straight wet blending, just something cool, unique. Different types of styles, different types of painting techniques, and that's why I love this hobby so much. Now, when I'm feathering the paint out like that there, that's what you would do with wet blending, but it works obviously, again, as a smoother transition if the paint is wet. And that is, a, that is to say, like the gray primer is why wet blending doesn't work for this technique because you don't really want to wet blend your primer coat that's not something that I would recommend and since it's already primed there's not a whole lot of options in terms of doing a wet blend now I could have done it with the wash but that's besides the point as you can see his skin starting to really pick up a very white tone very bright colors and then, like I said, we're going to tone that down again with another wash that I will be mixing. That will be a mix of light gray and the rust wash we used yesterday. Well, I didn't say that explicitly, but the way that I blend, because I do everything dry and in stages, is through weathering. That's kind of why I wanted to make this little series on the Lord of Plagues, just because... Yeah, there is a right and a wrong way to paint, but I just choose to believe that everybody has something a little bit different. Like I said, I was talking to a lot of people and how doing post-weathering on base paint jobs is not the way to go. And that's perfectly fine. That's how I painted my core in Blood Warrior that I showed you the other day. That's right over there. I did paint jobs and I'm or a base paint coat and then layers and layers of paint and now I'll get into doing weathering. So it works again in different circumstances in my opinion. So yeah, you can kind of see the flesh taking, taking shape there. The only thing I will warn about which is what you're seeing on that arm there, is that the Vallejo paints, because they're so thin, do tend to dry out a lot, and so they'll kind of brush on a little wonky. Gotta unscrew some paint. I'm mixing more of a two to one ratio, two being the flesh, to one part white. And we're gonna try and see if we can make this, again, a little bit warmer in some places.
I should have used a flatter brush for this, but that is okie dokie. And then the next step after this one is going to be a dry brush of white over the second light gray sort of mixed flesh wash. Oh, I'm so sorry. You can't really see what I'm doing. That's my mistake. So he's looking like this so far, and here's what he looks like in the front. So I'm going to do that to the rest of his body. And then from there, in the next video, I will show you the white dry brush and just how all this is going to come together. Normally I wouldn't finish the video before actually finishing the miniature, but this is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would, and I don't want the video to be too terribly long, but we'll see if I can just finish up the back here. Just trying to hit the raised details with the most color here and keep the most intense shade of this on the raised parts. got some in that wound there that won't be hard to fix but you kind of want to avoid doing that if you do choose to paint this particular miniature in this style but it's okay because you have to go in there anyway and change the colors of those now I'm gonna make mine open sores I know he has some boils and everything so I'm gonna just keep the color palette constantly changing uh, with this figure but in the actual color makeup of the kit it calls out for those to be um, yellow because you're supposed to be these blocks of fat that are just under the flesh that are being exposed from decay, which is an interesting idea. Um, and I do have yellow paint that I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to do it for all of them because I don't like the particular Vallejo yellow that I have. I don't think it would be best. But we'll see. That comes way later. Right now we're still just covering the base cut of this figure. Nope, came off his toothpick. Okay, so that's pretty much all you're going to do. Or all I'm going to do for this stage. And then another wash just to... Oops, forgot this bicep here to unify the surface and then a dry brush of two parts off white and one part flesh so we can still keep it a little bit pink and then from there we will go into painting all these details 
So thank you so much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified when I upload the rest of the videos in this series or if you're just interested in painting miniatures at all. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.